Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Paulo Treves. I'm adjunct professor of uh, software development at Humber College, and I did teach here at Ryerson. Um, and uh, I have a mobile application. Just give me uh, a few seconds to set up. Is, does everyone see the screen uh, clearly? Okay. Um, so what I have here on the top is my development environment, which is in Eclipse, and I have an Android emulator. Recall on the go basically is an Android uh, application, Android-based application that's uh, very, uh, comes in two edition. There's a light version and the professional version. So the light version is meant to be very simple, very easy to use, uh, to be configured by the caregiver or a family member, but it's meant to be used at, at the end of the day by any dementia patient. So let me give you an example here. Mm. So um, basically I have here um, at the bottom here a Samsung Android phone, okay? And you see there's different icons. And the first time I'm gonna launch this application recall on the go light, okay? I'm gonna be prompted. Um, I don't see if you can see that clearly. There's gonna be a prompt for a task and uh, a response, okay? So being a caregiver, if I'm playing the role of the caregiver or a family member, I'm gonna type in a task in here, which for, for example could be car keys, okay? I have a patient at home that's having particularly difficulties with car keys, and what should be the response? So the response, for example, could be, you usually leave your car keys or your keys on the kitchen table. So he's gonna enter that and save that, okay? And every other time he's gonna run this application, it's gonna show uh, a prompt, I don't know if you can see, and an animation of a picture, and it's gonna read it. Okay, so if I go and run it again, run my animation. Oh, I think I turned off the sound profile. Mm -hmm. If I just go to the settings. Back to the settings. If I go at sound and silent mode. Okay, oh, it's off. Okay. So basically, it's acting, what it's asking to do, it's asking as a visual cue and an audio cue. Uh, for the patient, okay? The application also comes in a uh, professional edition, okay? And the professional edition has more functionality. So if I click on another icon here that I have deployed, professional edition here has some functionality which are inform uh, what is uh, dementia, has some text or URL, diagnose. So a caregiver or family member could enter some checks here. So if a patient or a person has problem uh, remembering names or addresses, and then would diagnose if that person might have uh, dementia, and there's an assist function. So the assist function plays an animation here, and there are some number of tasks. For example, car keys is one of them. There's others like house keys, newspapers, favorite book, dentist appointment, and then there's a scale. Okay, is it a mild problem? Is it a severe problem? And based on that, you can click a recall function, display a text. I don't know if you can hear it. Your dentist appointments are every six months with Dr. Droid. So there's in, uh, Dr. Droid, okay. Um, so there's speech synthesis uh, built into the application. Okay, uh, the application also, because it's a professional edition, it connects, has more functionality, so it can connect, has a contact us feature um, where it links in to internal components of Android, to a browser, or a phone number, or an email address, and also has an admin function. So the admin function has a login page where the user is gonna type a username and password actually the caregiver, and that'll le uh, lead him to a database. Uh, 
and I'll click on submit. And here, for example, I have some tasks where my patient, for example, could have issues in the bathroom, uh, remembering what's, uh, where's the soap, or something like that, right? And it's tailoring a response. So again, there's a light version and a professional version, and the light version is meant to be very easy, simple to customize. And if I come back to my emulator here, okay, if you look carefully at the emulator, I don't see. We'll see it. Mm -hmm. On the emulator, I have different instances here. For example, medication or bathroom uh, or meal. And if I just click, for example, for medication, it brings me a screen, prompts me a text, and it plays an animation, and it verbally synthesizes that text. Okay. So that's uh, that's. That's the application. Yeah. Anyone who's demoing using a device, turn your brightness down. Yeah. Great, thank you for the uh, for the demonstration. Um, I had a question regarding the um, the notification capabilities of the application. If the application is not currently open, uh, does it run in the background, for example? Could you actually, could the you know caregiver um, uh, set a reminder, and the reminder would, for example, make the phone ring or, or vibrate? Yes, I, I've I've received a lot of uh, feedback during the conferences on Friday with different people that come came to speak to me, and that would be meant for the professional edition. The light edition is really meant for a broad range of patients and as a visual cue and audio cue. So the problem is there's definitely that potential to link it to internal components, look at the calendar or maps to assist the patient further. Great. So just to, to make it clear again, the, so the, the pro version is meant to be used by the caregiver and the light version is meant to be used by the patient. Is that right? Uh, actually, the, the, the caregiver will configure the light version, okay. but the, the patient will use it. Great. Just to pick up on the, the actual tasks, are they going to be pre, uh, like the timing set up in advance, or is it as they're required? As they're required. The light version allows that customization to be entered, uh, a task and response, as required. And it's what I call a disposable app. So that means because it's so simple and configurable, when, the, the, for example, the car keys becomes a greater issue as the disease progresses, the response can be tailored and it can be deleted and a new instance created. Can you just tell me again how, like just from the very beginning, the patient picks, or the, the family member picks up the phone, what's the next step that they have to do before they get into Basically, they, they, uh, as an example, they could go to Google Play download recall on the go light, install it, an icon on their, their mobile device, a tablet or a smartphone, and the first time they'll run it, they'll be prompted to enter a task and a response. And they'll enter a task, for example, could be a medication. So the response, what kind of medi a response we want for medication? So it could be Jennifer, remember to take your medication at two o'clock, and, and the bottle is in the top left kitchen cabinet. So that's the response for Jennifer. For another patient, maybe Patrick, the response for him would be, well, you know, um, remember your, this, this appointment, uh, your doctor's appointment is tomorrow, and you've kept the bottle on the kitchen table, usually. Right. So it allows to tailor the response to the patient, to the need. I'm just, from the patient, or from the family member's point of view, what they're just going to press on the icon and how are they going to get to the problem that they are trying to solve well it's going to act as a visual and audio cue you know, i remember during the conference there were some uh, presenters that talked about the, the need for cues visual and audio cues so this answers that this tries to address that issue 